and welcome to Retech. And those of you who've been following over the last few episodes have kind of realized there's a bit of a theme going on at the moment, and that's with the Sinclair machines. Now, I don't usually do machines in kind of order of manufacturer, but this time um, it seems that I've got quite a bit of catching up to do with my fixing, my repairs, my checking of my Sinclair hardware, etc. And you may have also noticed that I've been looking at the clones a little bit more. And um, the reason for that is because I've kind of been taken by some of the Harlequin clones and some of the, even the software based clones that are out and about there. And um, some of them do start to make a lot of sense. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to um, continue with the the ZIF clone, the, the 512, a little bit later on because I'm actually still waiting for parts for this. I've actually ordered um, some new cases, brand new cases and keyboard membranes and mats and so on to build up a really nice machine based around this board which you'll have seen on my last video. And um, the SIZIF or SIZIF 512 or 512 is quite a nice machine but I've still got a lot of things to cover with it but I'm not going to do that until I've actually put it together in a, in a really nice case. Now my original plan was to put it in a, a typewriter style kind of tactile keyboard and case rather than the original ZX Spectrum one but um the the cases that you can put it in are either very expensive for what they are with a 3d printed case and a and a key switch keyboard when you know really you could have gone out and bought a complete omni for kind of less than that money or less than the cost of the case for one of these machines and that kind of defeats the object really of having a reasonable low-cost clone. So I've decided to go down the Sinclair original look-alike case route and then just modify the case to fit the board because I think they look smart and they look right at the end of the day and they also have the legends on the keys. I did look at um, putting it in one of my Decatronics keyboards or maybe going for um, one of the Saga keyboards which are still you can get now and again but that would still mean hacking around the case and when you start cutting into a case that's like kind of 42 years old um, it kind of doesn't sit well so I'm not going to go down that route with that one I'm going to leave my spare Decatronics case as is as it was built as it was intended originally without cutting or drilling in holes into the back of it which effectively would ruin the case so yeah that's that's my plans for this board and I do actually so far like this board but there's a lot of other things I need to cover on this but I'll do that when I've put it into the case. So what I'm going to do today is have a look at this. Or to be more precise, literally what's in the box. It's one of those things that I bought a little while ago. It's a box of Sinclair related goods that if I remember correctly it was meant to be functioning. But you know as we all know and as we all have done we've bought things in the past off of auction sites and um, they do function to a point and they still need repairing so I'm going to have a look at this box of goodies which I've had for a little while and I haven't opened it all I've done is I just literally cut the the box uh, to see what was in there and then just put it to one side because of time um, and also I wanted to do it when I was kind of doing other Sinclair related items as well so it kind of carried on a little bit of a theme but the intention wasn't to do a few videos in a row based on Sinclair products but this is just how it's kind of happened. So I kind of hope it's a, a good working machine but you know at the end of the day um, I don't know until I have a look at it so let's have a look at what's in the box. And we're just going to open it up and find out what's going on inside of it. 
Okay, so first up we have this and I'm just going to open the packaging now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the box out of the way and then just take the units out one by one because it's quite a full box. Okay, so the first thing we have here is JVC MSX joystick. Okay, a bit of a strange thing to get in um, a bundle of Sinclair goods. But let's have a quick look. It's quite interesting because I don't think I've actually seen one of these before. It's not, this isn't really an unboxing video. I just want to just show you what was in that box. Because not really kind of into unboxing anything, but um, that's quite different. It's a nine pin, Tari style. It's very soft, very squishy. There's no actual micro switches in there, I don't think. I think it's just one of those discs where it actually touches certain parts on the disc and then basically has either four or eight contacts to make up the movement. So, but it's JVC. Didn't even know that JVC did joysticks, so that's quite interesting. So I'll just put that to one side. It would be nice to find out if it actually works. Anyway, so we'll go on to the next one. Okay, it looks like we have uh, a bunch of cassettes, which is nice. Let's have a quick look. Always kind of interested because I do buy these kind of things. And then I put them to one side. These look like they're of the day. We all, at the end of the day, had these. Um, 1980s piracy. <laughs> Galaxians. Airline, Krakatoa. Not sure what's on that one. To WH Smith, C60. So at the time, they were all the kind of rage, really. WH Smith tapes in the UK, same here. Looks like somebody really did want to try and keep all of their cassettes with the right format, even though they were just standard shortened 15 minute cassette tapes. But I'm sure it seemed very, very high tech at the time. And you know, we've got things like the Hobbit on here and all that kind of thing. So, yep, that's quite interesting. I wonder if they actually do work. Okay, looks like we've got another pack of tapes. Now, I'm just gonna be quick as I can before we have a quick look at what the machine is like. And again, lots of piracy going on in the uh, early 1980s. Again, all proper computer tapes. So somebody spent some time and effort on these. Again, WH Smiths. Oh, we actually have an original. We have Snooker here. And again, a Dixon's computer tape as well. They're all C15s for using with sort of micros at the time. So you could literally get one or two programs on a side, uh, which meant that, you know, you're not kind of putting hundreds and hundreds of games on one side and then trying to find them or struggling to find them. So we'll move on to the next part of the box. Uh, this is a little different. Oh, it's a joystick interface. Whoa, £9.99p. I don't think I've seen one in a box like this either. It's very diminutive and it's a very small joystick interface. So who made this one? Um, okay, Volcar. Yeah, Volcar Electronics Limited. Okay, that's cool. I wonder if that still works. It looks quite a neat little design it's not bulky in any way so that's nice i wonder if that was kind of sold with the joystick because again it's something i haven't really seen much of it's a tiny little package okay it looks like we have some more cassettes i wonder if these are 
of the 1980s pirate variety. We kind of forget that piracy was a big thing at the time, um, mainly because it was kids. You've got to remember, kids bought these Sinclair machines and Commodore machines, and kids generally didn't have a lot of money, so they had to invent other ways of actually getting hold of their favourite games. So we've got an original Mastertronic, so it probably was a kid, because this was the £1.99 range of games. So that's a Pac-Man clone. Then we got Space Raiders, um, Kong from Ocean, so somebody then spot, spent a little bit more money on these. I think these were about £10 or so at the time. So that's a, basically a Donkey Kong clone. Um, missile Defence, the ubiquitous Horizon cassette. Again, more of the um, 199 Mastertronic range, um, Voyage into the Unknown, and Fighter Pilot, which digital integration. I don't know if I actually ever saw that, but again, you always find something new. I know what this is just to buy the kind of outline of it, and it's something I haven't got that's working. You see, at the time, let's get it out of the packaging, okay? At the time in the UK, um, the news agent called WH Smith was um, very, very much into selling microcomputers and it started off with the, I think it started off with the Sinclair brand. It was one of the first steps into the kind of moving into a different industry that this news agent was doing because it started off as a news agent then it got into selling stationery and then it got into selling things like music and then the next logical step was well the cassette based aren't they and they sold music on cassette so they started games and then the computers etc so they um did a, a range of cassettes which hardly any of these uh, I've actually got hold of work. In fact, if this is this one works, it'll be my first working one that I didn't have to play around with. Um, and these were WH Smith data recorders, which were basically a very cheap and very cheerful cassette recorder that they rebranded as a WH Smith data recorder. So they were bought very cheaply to do a job literally to um, go with your Sinclair ZX81 or your Spectrum or whichever of the micro they were pushing at the time. Uh, this one looks in very clean condition and it's incredibly clean inside. So I've got a kind of a hunch that this one will probably work because it looks almost immaculate. So yeah, it'd be nice to see if that one does work. And that would be a nice addition to any kind of UK-based Sinclair collection. Okay, so finally in the box we have this. And it, it is another ZX Spectrum. Um, so let's just get this box open. And it's um, a 16K version. Now, I said in my other video not so long ago that I didn't have a working 16K ZX Spectrum and I didn't realise I had another one in the box somewhere. Um, so yeah, it would be nice to get this one working because the other one is still waiting for parts because uh, if you remember it has a, a fault with the keyboard, which a lot of them do. Now I can't remember what version or what issue this one is or what it said on the advert. So let's um, take it out and have a look. But first I'm just going to remove some of these. Okay, so it looks in pretty good shape. Um, it's better in kind of terms of cardboard exterior than some of my spectrums because they really weren't very expensively done but i always like the kind of black background with 
literally what you get and the actual size on the box of what you really do get. So again, as I said before, there was no kind of ambiguity as to what you were actually getting in the box. And I think that's refreshing because nowadays packaging is so overblown and they promise much more than they actually deliver. Now this just delivers what it tells you. So let's get it open. Looks like it's been sealed up or taped up at some point. So and the bits of polystyrene are kind of a little bit flaky. But the box is reasonable, so I'm going to keep that in good condition. And the polystyrene's in good shape. It's in very good shape for its age. Okay, so we have a Sinclair ZX Spectrum with a very 1980s plug on there. I mean, these are, these are fairly safe with a little cut cutouts for your fingers. Um, and they have built-in strain relief, which um, are screwed down with those two screws. But modern moulded plugs, they're literally, you can't detach them from here. They're moulded into the cabling and they have a little bit of PVC or black dipped plastic halfway up the pins. So if you do manage somehow, and I'm not sure how you're going to actually do it, but I'm sure somebody has done it, to put your fingers here and here while you're plugging it in, um, you, you're not really going to get a shock. But I'd, it's one of those things. I mean, I can't envisage anybody doing that and getting a shock because those pins have to locate nearly two thirds of the way into the sockets before they make contact inside the housing. So, but anyway, they did a few more steps, just be safe, but these are fairly safe. And, but obviously we're doing 240 volts as well, which is um, quite a high voltage really. So here we go, we'll um, have a quick look. We've got the ZX Spectrum, which looks in remarkable condition. Okay, it's weird because it's got a handwritten serial number on here next to the 16K logo. And I'm not sure what revision that is. It doesn't look like in the back. I'm just having a quick look without opening it. It doesn't look like an issue one or even an issue two, it may be an issue two because I can't see the heat sink which is across the back of some of these models, but it's in good condition. It's really nice condition actually, but we'll see if it actually works, okay? So what else have we got? We've got the usual booklets, um, program guide, introduction guide at uh, the WH Smith cassette guide. So it's been fairly well looked after. Um, the usual what can you buy guides. And what I always find interesting is some of the receipts or little bits of paperwork that people save. And that's the Backpacker's Guide to the Universe, part one on the back there. So somebody was interested in that at some point. Um, and ah, and there's the, the Hobbit guy, which somebody's lovingly photocopied and stapled together. So yeah, somebody's spent a lot of time with this machine in the past. Probably not so much with the basic manual. I'm not so sure. There's no notes in it, but I could have been wrong. And yeah, it looks like it's um, been remarkably well looked after. So I'm wondering whether or not it was just put away somewhere um, when it failed, <laughs> which I'm kind of thinking. Okay, and it looks like it's had a brand new fly lead at some point. And it looks like a fairly 
good RF lead so yeah it seems quite nice I'm not going to use the power supply in here for now because I tend to use a non-good one for testing so let's find out if it actually powers up and what we end up with is still a rolling screen which you can see here but if you listen very carefully you can actually hear some of the keys working but not all so we have a membrane fault on here as well So it looks like we've got a membrane that's out. So what we're going to do is going to take it apart now and then decide what we're going to do with it. We're going to find out what revision this is as well. Just curious as to why there's a handwritten serial number on this. I'm kind of curious to find out what's inside. Right, okay, we've got the screws out of it, so we're just going to ease the case open. Okay, and let's find out. Now, on first inspection, it doesn't seem to be cracked or damaged, but if you look very closely, I think it's been trimmed <laughs> either side. I think this has been opened. I think this has definitely been opened before. Now this is meant to be a 16K model, but it's not. This looks like it's been upgraded. I'd be surprised if this is 16K because there's your bank, 16K. They normally empty and so are these I think this has been a 48k upgrade it certainly seems that way it's also got um, a, a factory fix just here now if I bring it in to here we have a factory fix with a very small wire going to the processor now on these just an issue two board what normally happens is you have a that that fix goes across here so so all i've done is i've plugged my dk tronic spare keyboard into the spectrum just to give it a test and if i press the keys you can hear it working perfectly so this this machine actually works really well and then i'm going to decide whether or not to do a a composite mod or not on this machine because clearly the um, rf isn't very strong on this okay so we have the old membrane here which is going in the bin <laughs> it's not it's just a piece of scrap really so it's not worth even holding on to the original faceplate here, um, it has a few marks in it where it was pulled off. You can't avoid that 99% of the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with a new one and a new one. So it's going to be a very easy fix. And then we're going to do the composite mod. So really all you do is you take this and then what you need to do is make sure that this is going to go in the correct way around. So always make sure that you line it up with the keyboard first. So you're not putting it in back to front. So just be very careful. So just slot it through. And you'll see the major points of location are actually 
symmetrical just about so you can actually get it back to front if you're not being very very careful about it so you line the notches up and you know just make sure that the they're actually lined up properly and you haven't got it bulging over the the plastic you should be able to feel the offset notches slightly with your finger and thumb just to make sure that it's nicely done okay and that's really it as far as putting the membrane on the next bit is the cover the cover plate i mean that again very simple this one's quite good it's from zx renew um, and they put a little tear tab here but it really isn't a very good one so you're gonna have to be very careful and just cut it open down here which is what i'm going to do okay and just slide it out and then then you don't bend it trying to get it out of the packaging okay it's also got this 3m tape on here to hold it into place so once it's on there it's going to look quite smart so first thing you really have to do is to line up the mat so put the mat on squarely or as squarely as you can get it make sure it's located in there quite nicely okay and then just peel the tapes again you only get one shot at lining this up okay so make sure that it does line up perfectly in the first go and before you seal it make sure the edge lines up and the edge of the top as you can see here okay and then just gently press it into place doesn't need a lot of pressure okay and then you have a perfect ZX Spectrum nice perfect cover on this one so that's really nice okay so as you can tell it looks the part it looks very well and if you're going to go to all of that trouble then really putting on a, a, a face plate that's kind of a little bit dented even though it's an original face plate i mean it's still sticky i mean i don't know what type of glue they used on that but um it's not really going to look the part when it's on the machine so it's just cut and then cut and then cut and you can just move that out of the way and if you leave enough on it like that if you ever want to put RF back you just re-solder the wires together okay and that's the same on the side as you can see there's a little bit sticking out there and the same with that one then you solder the new wire to here on this end which we'll do now and then solder on the wire so it's nice and secure okay, the next one is to join the far left wire on here the far right one which is bent over just there you don't need to do anything with and then you just solder up the final pin which is this one here which is the original RF lead Okay, and there you go, you got a 1982 Sinclair Research, and that's working on this composite mod. Very easy, it's a five minute fix, okay? So you will see how simple it really is. So look at the picture, there's no rolling screen, there's no RF problems, it works with any LCD TV with a, a standard composite in. So it's um, a much, much easier thing to do. And also, with it being composite out now, you can convert that to HDMI really, really quickly 
with a composite to HDMI converter which are very very cheap and cheerful so there you go there's um, a couple of options that you've got on this machine so let's get the keyboard put together and let's see if it works And it almost looks literally brand new. So this is a very successful repair of a machine that was basically left languishing after I bought it off of an auction site. This is a very successful repair of a ZX Spectrum, although not that involved, but it's had a composite mod and a new keyboard membrane, new faceplate, and it's well worth doing. So I hope you enjoyed this and please subscribe and I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye bye.